Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have three topics for you, but before I start the video, I would like to tell you about the book that I have collaborated on with Scott Ritter. As you know, the waiting time, the delivery time takes a while. So just to those of you who are interested in giving this book as a gift to someone, perhaps maybe for Christmas, which I know is quite far ahead. We have few months until December. However, it takes a while to get the book. So if you are interested in buying it, please click on the links down below the video in the description box and you can order it directly from the publisher that is in the United States or you can order it internationally from Amazon. Uh, and when you buy the book, it supports Scott's work as well as my work and it also helps me to buy my little house in the country that starts with R. So guys, today what I have for you? Well, two topics about Zelensky, who is fearing the PR disaster. The second topic is about Ukrainian boxer that has been captured by police in Kraków and why, why that happened? Well, the official story might not tell you, but there are some rumors circulating around, which who knows, maybe there is some truth to it. So I'm going to go through this. And the last topic that is the one from Moscow. Let me just find the title of this article, because this is the topic about a shooting that took place in Moscow. Two people were killed, seven injured in shooting in downtown Moscow. I have an article about this that I will be reading you the second part of this video from Bulgarian uh, portal that is called Fakti which in Polish we say fact, in English facts. Very interesting one. It's a true drama and it involves the richest uh, Russian woman, her husband, as well as there is uh, mentioning of President Putin. So maybe you stay tuned all the way to the end of this video while I'm reading this to you. But we will start with Zelensky and the PR disaster that he was fearing, which it's already a disaster. So, Zelensky has reportedly cancelled a meeting with Latin American leaders. A Brazilian newspaper reported that the Ukraine government called off the meeting, fearing a public, public relations PR disaster after many leaders turned down invitation to the event. Uh, this is, I think, Brazilian newspaper Fola de São Paulo reported that the idea behind the meeting was to demonstrate symbolic support for Ukraine's cause in its over two year long conflict with Russia. But Tim Zelensky feared the PR disaster. Kiev had planned to hold the talks on the sidelines of the upcoming United Nations General Assembly scheduled to convene on September 24th very few leaders confirmed that they would be willing to attend such an event. Ukrainian officials reportedly said it would be an appropriate platform for Zelensky to present relevant to reliable information about the conflict. Ukraine also wanted to rally support for the Zelensky peace formula. Kiev had to scrap its uh, plans after it got only few confirmations of attendance. Fola, so the Brazilian newspaper, reported that the Ukrainian government decided it was necessary to avoid a situation that could possibly be interpreted as a lack of support. On that note, that's what's happening. You know, it's, uh, it truly is when you think about, and I'm, I talk about the narcissism quite often lately, because when you look at this from the psychological standpoint, this is how, 
this is how you conquer, conquer. This is how you win this battle with narcissists. You just ignore. When you ignore, when you don't interact, something happens to the ego, doesn't it? Ego death. Sooner or later, ego death. So, what's going on, everyone, with the Ukrainian boxer, the champion? Because he was trying to fly from Kraków to Greece, the Saloniki, but he didn't. And why? Well, the official story is a little different than from what people are saying. Some people are saying that he was stopped because he was probably trying to smuggle some sniff-sniff, you know, substance or whatever was the case, but what I really want to tell you about is how much influence Zelensky has on Polish government and Polish decision-making people, because, you know, the police department did the right thing. They, I will read you what happened. But someone gave them the order to release that champion. So let me tell you. Ukrainian boxer was detained in Kraków. Zelensky was outraged. Official now article from wiadomości.pl, Polish portal, that by the way still has the Ukrainian flag next to the name. I mean, guys, can I tell you? About time to say sayonara, do svidania to that flag. The title of this, of this article is Zelensky was outraged at the Polish services. There is a statement from the border guard on Usyk. I think that's how you say his name. That's the name of the boxer, the champion, Ukrainian champion. I don't follow boxing, so no idea. Ukrainian boxer Oleksandr Usyk was taken to the official premises of the border guard post at the Kraków Balice airport. That is, by the way, the second largest airport in Poland after Warsaw. After the flight, staff did not allow his fellow passenger to board the plane to the Saloniki. Now I will be quoting Major Jacek Michałowski, I think that's his name, who says the boxer was put in handcuffs. There was a move, uh, video circulating actually with this. The boxer was put in handcuffs as a preventive measure said the spokesman of the Carpathian Border Guard Unit, Major, sorry flies, Major uh, Jacek Michałowski. On Tuesday evening, so this is the day before yesterday, the person traveling with Usyk was not allowed to board the plane by the flight staff at the airport near Kraków. The Ukrainian boxer decided to stay with his travel companion. The problem was that these people did not want to leave the gate, which caused the flight of the plane to be slightly delayed. Officers of the airport security service intervened by the gentlemen did not follow their instructions. So, in accordance with... Sorry, I have a lot of like bees, flies and everything that are important, but a bit um, disturbing. <laughs> Uh, so, in accordance with the procedure, officers of the special intervention team of the border guard were called and, uh, this and led this gentleman to the premises of the border guard and explained to them what the procedure looked like, why they could not fly away. So, they pulled them away. They were instructed and released, reported Major Michałowski. The spokesman added that the boxer was led to the rooms in handcuffs. It was completely preventive because they were agitated, unhappy, because they did not fly away. Uh, it was completely preventive due to the stature of this person, he stressed. So the official story goes that because they were not uh, cooperating with those border guards officer, officers, they were uh, delaying the plane and taken off this plane because that boxer stood for his colleague or his friend who was not allowed on that plane. I don't, I'm not buying this story. I think there is more to this story. Maybe there was uh, some use of substance or maybe some influence of the sniff-sniff stuff. I don't know. 
I am just saying I'm not buying completely this store. I think something is, is off. I don't think it's just the behavior. I think there is more to it. But let me read you because the point is about how much influence Zelensky has on releasing those people. The airline Ryanair was asked by PAP, I think Polish Associated Press, Polish Associated Press, I think, about the reasons for not letting the boxer's companion on the plane. The statement explained that the person traveling with Usyk was rightly denied boarding on the bus flight flying from Krakow to the Saloniki on Tuesday evening. The passenger, I'm quoting now, Ryanair representative Alicia Wojcik Gołębiowska. So she says, the passenger was stabbed by an agent at the gate due to his behavior, which made it difficult to check in passengers and not listening to the instructions of the staff. So, according to her, the athlete was an accompanying person, could have traveled. However, he decided to stay at the airport as well. So the boxer actually could travel, but the, the boxer, the champion, made a scene because his colleague could not travel. So that's how it looks like from the statement. After the check-in was completed, the staff called the airport guard. Usyk issued a statement after the incident in which he emphasized that there was a misunderstanding at the airport. The world champion thanked the Ukrainian authorities for their support. He also appreciated the professionalism of the Polish services. Now this is from his Instagram post. Friends, I am fine. The misunderstanding was quietly cleared up. Thank you to everyone who was worried. I thank Ukrainian diplomats for their support and respect for Polish law enforcement officers who perform their duties regardless of height, weight, arm reach, and champion titles. That's what he wrote on Instagram. Now Zelensky was outraged by the actions of the Polish services. Surprise, surprise. Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky, they still call him that, president, spoke with the border, sorry, with the boxer, with the boxer on, by the phone. And Zelensky stated on his social media on X platform, previously known as Twitter, I spoke with Oleksandr Usyk on the phone after he was detained. I was disappointed by this attitude towards our citizen and champion. I instructed the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Andrei Sibiha. So, you know, no longer... What was the name? I, for, I already forgot his name. That's actually very good. Who twist around Vowen massacre. That's good I forgot him, his name because my brain doesn't need it really. Anyway, he instructed the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine and the Minister of International Affairs of Ukraine, Ihor Klimenko, to immediately look into all the details of the incident at Kraków Airport. Now, on the order of Ukrainian President Zelensky, we immediately reacted to the detention of Oleksandr Usyk in Kraków and caused his release. We considered the actions taken against our champion to be disappropriate and unacceptable. We will send an appropriate diplomatic note to the Polish side on this matter, announced the head of the Ukrainian diplomacy, Andriy, I think that's his name, Sibiga. And he put it, this out on X portal. Can you, I mean, yes, we can imagine this. Like they are just above the law in everything pretty much in everything. So don't touch, don't correct. They are above the law, like the gods of the universe, for real. So now, regardless at this point, if they were carrying the sniff sniff products or if they were doing some other things, the law is the law. It doesn't matter who you are, right? No, they are above it because he's a champion and who really gives the bleep? So we have this now. What took place in Moscow? So I took a look at TASS today and I just give you the title from TASS because they don't quite describe the full story, which, is, which sounds a bit like a telenovela from Venezuela. However, there is mentioning of President Putin here. So I was like, this is quite interesting story. And, uh, and the leader of Chechnya as well, Kadyrov. 
So this is like money, politics, power, influence, romance, a like perfect story for like telenovela. So I decided to read you this entire article that goes in more depth, depth about what took place in Moscow, where two people were killed, seven injured in shooting in downtown Moscow. The list of wounded in, uh, includes two law enforcement officers who arrived at the site to stop criminal actions. This is the title from TASS, but the article from Bulgarian portal that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, Facti, has a title like this, Shooting in Moscow, Divorce of Russian Oligarchs with a Chechen flavor in the Russian capital. First and foremost, let me tell you everyone, because this is fascinating. You know, when I've been to Moscow, and I've been quite many times already, and I love Moscow, there is one street that I really like. It's not a long street, but for some reason I like the energy of the street. And one of my videos, I've mentioned this street. I think it's called, I'm not sure if it's Lane or it's uh, Street Ulica, but it's named Romanov. Romanov Lane, I think. It's a very historical street in the center of Moscow with some beautiful buildings. And this situation actually took place on that street. I recorded one video there, I think. If I find it, I put down below in the description box. But isn't it interesting? Like I was actually able to know where this took place exactly, what street it was. So let's go through this, everyone. Sorry, a little bit more chilled out video today. I hope you're okay with this. Accept the subject, right? So, uh, a shooting happened yesterday in the center of Moscow and near the main office of the largest online re retailer, Wildberries, in the center of Moscow. It is noteworthy that yesterday the official state agencies reported on the incident in fragmented and small pieces of information and this morning the topic was not presented on the internet pages being pushed into the gossip columns hmm. so this must, must be an important uh, an important topic sorry the wind is flipping my pages two security guards at the wildberries office were reported killed in the shootout yesterday the head of the company tatiana bakalchuk stated that her husband tried to take over the company's office i just want to tell you before i continue it will be in the article that lady is the i think the richest uh, woman in russia apparently i think i'm correct so a statement here today a group of people led by vladislav bakalchuk that is her husband sergey Anufriev and Vladimir Bakin tried to take over the offices of Wildberries in Moscow, said the company's founder and the country's richest woman, yes, so she is, the country's richest woman, Tatiana Bakalchuk. Forbes estimates her fortune at $7.4 billion. Russia's investigative committee later confirmed that two people were killed in the shooting and seven people were injured, including two law enforcement officers. A criminal case has been opened under the article of murder, attempted murder of two or more persons, attempt on the life of a law enforcement officer, illegal possession of a firearm and arbitrary part two of article 330 of the criminal code of the Russian Federation. According to Interfax, around 30 people were taken to the police after the shooting. According to RBC, in addition to the shooting incident, uh, to the shooting incident on the territory of the Romanov Dvor business center, a similar incident also occurred at the Wildberries office in Iskra Park near the Dynamo metro station. There is no information there was any shooting there. In this second office, the group of 30 to 40 people in sports, military clothing, some wearing masks, was led by Wildberry's co-founder and former sales director, Sergei Anufniev, who left the company quietly before the changes announced in June. However, in the second half of the day, after the incident, the company's work was not affected. The husband of Wildberries manager, so of the, this 
wealthiest Russian woman, right? Richest uh, Russian woman. Vladislav Bakalchuk said that he arrived at the company's office with colleagues and was attacked by the security service and people unknown to me who provoked an armed conflict. According to him, one of his colleagues was injured during the shooting. According to Bakalchuk, he went to a meeting with management, meaning with his wife probably, to discuss the issues of building new warehouses. At the beginning of September, Vladislav Bakalchuk stated that the construction of new Wildberries warehouses throughout Russia and the CIS has been suspended as the financing of the contractor, his company, VB Development, has been cut off. A counter indictment of default on more than 60 contracts follow. Just bear with this, this is a very interesting story. I knew that provocations were possible, that's why I turned to the Ministry of Internal Affairs to provide security. My people were not armed, we were guarded by policemen. The first shots were fired from inside the building through the glass of the Wildberries office, Vlad Vladislav Bakalchuk says in a statement. His wife, for her part, caused the incident a failed attempt to raid the company. Now quoting her, the statement about alleged negotiations to which an armed group came sounds absurd, since no one agreed to any negotiations. That's what Tatiana Bakalchuk wrote. The conflict between the spouses, Vladislav and Tatiana Bakalchuk, became widely known in July by a publication of the head of Chechnya. Then Ramzan Kadyrov reported on his Telegram channel that the husband of the richest woman in Russia, the founder of Wild Berries, Tatiana Bakalchuk, came to him and complained about serious problems both in the family and with the established family business. According to Kadyrov, Vladis Vladislav Bakalchuk I think I say his name correctly, claimed that his wife contracted an unknown comp contacted, sorry, contacted an unknown company which, under the guise of a merger, is exhorting the business. The conflict is related to Wildberry's merger with advertising operator Rus Outdoor, which was officially announced on June 18th. This deal, as Forbes wrote, confused market participants. No one could understand how the deal was structured and what was wanted to achieve and what wants to achieve uh, yeah sorry my hand right and what and what it wanted to achieve. The agency writes that the merger can be explained by Tatiana's Bakalchuk affair with rules. <laughs> Outdoor director Robert uh, Mirzogan, Mi Mirzoyan, Mirzoyan. According to media reports, the deal between Wildberries and Rus Outdoor was approved by Putin personally. This is like the story. And the deputy head of the presidential administration, Maxim Oryeshkin, was appointed curator of the project. This is really. You know, many, many different rabbit holes here, right? RBC insists on this thesis even now. After her husband complained to Ramzan Kadyrov, Tatiana Bakalchuk stated that the deal was agreed with Vladislav Bakalchuk and announced her divorce with him. According to her, Vladislav is fully aware of what is happening in the family business and he was personally present at the presentation of the new structure of the United Company called LLC RVB. The divorce case of the Bakarchuk family is currently being considered in a court in Moscow. According to Forbes, all this was preceded by a letter that Mirz Mizorian, Mizorian, Mirzoyan and Bakalchuk sent to Vladimir Putin. They have presented the deal as creating the strongest competitor in Russia to companies such as Amazon and Alibaba and will create the largest digital banking network and payment system for rubble settlements worldwide 
bypassing Swift. So why I decided to read you all of this? Because I would like to know, guys, what do you think? This is very, very... This involves the business, the Russian government, the leader of Chechnya, I mean, involves, not in the process. I don't know who... Hmm. Do you think they did this because... You think the shooting took place because... Uh, yeah, I want to know what you think. I really want to know what you think. Because I'm feeling like in this situation here, this is more than just about the divorce. Who wanted to... to remove? Like, why, why they want to remove this, this husband guy? Hmm? I don't know, something is really, really fishy, shady here. I'm, I'm not buying this. I feel like it's, it's more than just uh, some shooting in Moscow. Because if this is the, the approach, like they want to become the biggest competitor in Russia against Amazon, Alibaba and Swift system, this is very big. So I'm not an expert. I just would like to know your thoughts. And we will end this video here, a very strange video, so I apologize for my like kind of low, mellow energy, but you know, it's okay, I'm in the nature. We will end this video with the comment of the day from Ranar, I think that's how you see your name, who says, George Orwell, Orwell's, George Orwell's Animal Farm and 1984 are the almost exact reflections of the West today. And indeed, you are right. With this being said, I will attach the links down below in the description box, uh, as well as my other platforms. Locals is there. Please join me there if you choose to support me monthly. I really, really appreciate. There is Patreon. There is um, buy me a coffee link, fundraiser. Of course, the links to my book, Covering Ukraine. The Scott Ritter interviews through the eyes of Anya K, as well as my Instagram. PayPal and buy me a coffee and with this being said everyone thank you so much for watching lots of love and remember we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity as far as the shop that you see we are the leading edge I will be adding more products with uh, other statements that I make thank you everyone see you in another video bye guys